All right. I was so looking forward to seeing you guys. How the heck are you? Good? Good. So what, if anything, did you um, notice about listening between last week and now? See how quickly you can get silence when you ask a question? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> I noticed that I totally didn't pay attention to any of that this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how'd that go? <laughs> it didn't go. <laughs> it didn't go. So um, <laughs> it didn't go means what? Means I wasn't aware during any of my conversations. <laughs> oh, how did you, did you have nice conversations? Yeah, I think so. Okay. For the most part, yeah. Did they seem any different than any other time? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to know. It's not like there's a right answer here. <laughs> it's a very, else? very busy week. Ah. Anybody else? Did anybody notice anything about their listening? I think one thing I noticed. Um, was really kind of listening for the feeling I was in when I was in a particular group or, um, you know, just just in, in, especially in work, just in terms of listening and work and just noticing where my feeling, listening for a feeling more, listening, not listening to the content of my head, but listening for what feeling I'm in when I come to a, you know, when I'm coming to the, to a, to the group or coming to the room or, um, so that's been interesting because just, uh, it, it felt like it just, yeah, just it was it was nice to notice. Yeah. Anybody else? I'm noticing um, a lot of evaluation of boy, I'm not in that highest, you know, high impact, low effort listening at all, and I'm kind of more in this. Um, Paying, paying attention, trying to say the right thing. And I also noticed this other piece of um, time and how time impacts my ability. Like I perceive on some level that if I have little time, I can't drop in so easily into a deeper level of listening. So there's a whole lot of chatter in my head. Um, and I kind of picked up on that a fair amount this past week. Would it be fair to say that you didn't notice the chatter before? Um, I guess what I thought I was doing previously was not what it was, is maybe what I'm trying to say. So um, if that makes sense, it's kind of like Absolutely. I thought I was doing a better job of listening than I was. Yeah, that, that was my circumstance. I always thought I was doing a really good job of listening. <laughs> Turns out, nope. Not so much. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing at first, but but learning how to listen better was so rewarding. I got over the embarrassment. But it, it it's you have to notice how you are listening, and you did that this week, and that's important. It's the we're going to talk about this a little more later, but there really are only two steps to, de to, to deep listening. One being seeing it as a good idea. And once you've taken care of that, 
then all you have to do is notice how you are listening. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. And, you know, I wonder if the time thing that I'm considering is really a non question of because if I'm listening deeply, things can just evolve faster. I yep. Think, you got it. Yeah. Good catch. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I wanted to jump in real quick on your um, your question or your our observations, I guess. Um, mine was I had a a real revelation actually um, with my daughter, uh, which I didn't anticipate. I was thinking, you know what? I want to get better at listening to my wife, or I want to get listen to listen better in business. But I had three of the best conversations that I have had in several years, three years uh, with my daughter this week. And it was a direct relation to just being aware and listening to, listening to her, to, to I don't necessarily know how to say it, but um, listening to her feelings and her observations of some really deep conversations. She's getting married. And so we, she's 21 and lives in Montana. And so all we have is our phone and our, and we don't get to see each other in person. And it was just some really good long conversations where I wasn't necessarily, this was a direct reflection to the last week. I wasn't necessarily looking for the next thing to say to her. And I was able to just listen to her feelings. And I think she was able to, or not, I think, but she was in tears, quite frankly, it's like, dad, I really see some awesome changes in you. And I was like, why? Cause I shut up. <laughs> um, but, uh, I think that's the real key is is being able to just be quiet and listen and not looking for the next next thing I want to give her advice about or the next thing I want to jump in and say, well, here, maybe you should try it this way. I just listen. And it was great. So I, I wanted to wow. say, say thank you for that, which I didn't anticipate. I was thinking, oh, I can get better at business. And I'm always thinking mm -hmm. about that, about how I can do better in that avenue. But it was it hit home for me just with my daughter. Wow. That's a, that's a big deal. Well, it is if you really know that if you, <laughs> when you know the background to it all too, um, it's, it's really cool. So thank you. I was looking forward to tonight. Wow. Isn't it interesting how people know when they're being listened to and they know when they're not? Yeah. And they can you know, one of, the, one, one of the things real quick, I just wanted to say was I was able to say to her to, to validate, or, I, I don't know that, um, to, to uh, say back, I did a little bit of reading and did this week about listening and, and Googling and listening. And, and one of the things was validating what you hear from her or from anybody. And I was able to do that a little bit. And it was just, it's, a, it's something new that I'm excited about trying, trying to do. So. Bravo. <laughs> if I had a medal, I'd give it to you. Well, <laughs> I'd give it back to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Great story. Who's next? I actually um, had a lot less miscommunication since last Tuesday. Um, where I work is super, super busy. I probably have 100 conversations a day. And, you know, my listening was, you know, number three on the list, take notes and ask a lot of questions. And when I stopped doing that, because I'm so busy, I'm trying to get to the, to the core of the issue so I could provide the service and then move on. And, and that not listening actually creates confusion and miscommunications. And then it actually takes up more time to try to figure out where we miscommunicated or where I misunderstood or where I, 
you know, um, trying to finish somebody else's sentences so that I can move the progress along faster so I can make something happen. And when I stopped doing that, what I realized was um, listening is like, I have a saying I have on my wall, slow is smooth and smooth is faster. But when you're trying to have a conversation at high speed, there's nothing slow about it. There's nothing smooth about it. And you usually have to revisit the same topic five times, which just is not faster. Yep. So I just sat back and, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hear this entire person out with all of their feelings and emotions behind it. Because most of my conversations with the people I serve is, is conflict related because <clears throat> all the people that I work with are involved in the carceral system. So there's conflict at every step. So when I just let it be and let people explain, ask, or whatever the conversation was uh, and, and let their feelings just ride out how they feel when they're talking, by the time they got all of that purged off, there was just a de-escalation in feeling I think people just felt like, okay, somebody heard me out without telling me about myself. And then we could get to the actual, whatever the problem solving thing needs to be. We could jump into that without miscommunication and with their committed input where it's, it wasn't me writing the program plan for them. They wrote it for themselves. And then I got to say, you, you already knew the answer. You, you're, you're fucking brilliant. Thank you for sharing that with me and you figured it out yourself and I get to be the audience member sitting here watching you do this. So um, I did go into full like contemplative, I'm just going to listen and see how that worked. And really I saved myself a lot of time, a lot of pain and anguish and um, yeah, slow is smooth. And smooth is definitely faster. Um, and everybody walked out of my office with um, with some feeling of accomplishment. So yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome. Holy cow. You're fucking brilliant. I, I just work real hard to surround myself by very brilliant people who teach me stuff all the time. And most of those folks that have taught me are the folks that I have committed to serve. So um, the people I work with are the PhDs. So if I listen to them better, I can help and be assistance and just be a community member Absolutely. with them better. So who knew that doing less would be so productive? Yeah. And I I I think I said this at the beginning. I can't remember who I said what to, but I think I mentioned that really listening to someone is the purest form of teaching people how to listen. So the people that you listened to last week, whether they know it or not, were learning how to listen. And you probably didn't even mention it. Awesome. <sighs> Bravo. Who else? I'll go. So I had I had a a big moment in my life that uh, I've been going for, going with back and forth, um, <clears throat> dealing with uh, my daughter's grandmother and and not to get into the whole story, but. The mother went out back on addiction and me and the grandmother are, are sharing time and and I'm in the process of going to court, but I want to have more time on my hands with my daughter to prove to the court that that like I'm, I'm, the, I'm the primary caregiver and blah 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 whatever. And so, <clears throat> but coming from a back a back thing of that it was troubled waters between me and the grandmother and we did see eye to eye and it's been it's been a transformation to where we're at now, however. We had we had a listening session last night, as a matter of fact, and well, I asked her if she she'd be willing to just do this with me. You know, I mean, like I'm just going to be here to listen. Whatever we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about, and 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 see where it goes from there. And we started she started talking about you know things that are going on in her life, 
Um, and then she started talking about, you know, the, the, the addiction of her daughter and all that other stuff. And then, you know, it just, uh, it, 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 it's, it was a, it was a common ground to where when I brought up that now that, that I would like the, the, the space to switch and the, for you to hear me and what I'm, what my thoughts are with my daughter and the, like the whole custody thing. It was, it was so receptive, receptive and it, it flowed. It just went, it just went and like all the anxiety that I had about even talking about it. She was like, oh yeah, no problem. Like we can adjust and just go through it. It was, it was like, it, it was beautiful. Cause to me, it's like when, <clears throat> unreal unrealizing that we're both at at the same space of listening and be, being seen and heard and, and and having and being able to voice what our complete thoughts are and whatever was going on it just it just it validated all, all my all her thoughts you know what I mean and then and, and it's like it gave me the voice to just meet her and see her and just be able to convey what was going on in my mind so it was it was a mutual thing to where like I never experienced it before. You know, I was like, you know, because it was just, it was, it was pretty big. But it was just listening at first, then being able to, to come back around. If that makes sense. Uh, boy, that sounds so respectful. It's so, um, again, it's like so much can happen from doing less. You know, from not analyzing or processing or figuring out or just just listening until you can hear what's in someone's heart. It's so powerful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty big. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, that was a good week. I, I, I mean, I, I do a lot of classes and stuff, uh, group, group classes. And, um, and I think I, I know this, a good distinction for me is, is really the, the trying hard to listen compared to the effortless listening. Like that's, that's huge. Like that subtle shift of doesn't need to totally tire me out to really be present, you know, like it doesn't need to completely waste me for the whole day. Sometimes <laughs> it does a little bit, but sometimes, but you know, like it's just, it's just a nice, like, like, oh, there's, there's an effortless aspect to it. And um, just falling into that more and, and still not listening to myself quite as much, you know, um, not listening to my own narrative which you know, yeah. tends to try to sneak back in sometimes on my own yeah, stories. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause you, you, you start seeing, um, you start seeing the difference between listening to yourself and really wanting to hear what somebody else has to say. It starts feeling off to be analyzing and processing and what it's, it doesn't feel right. And you get less and less interested in your own story. You get more and more interested in really connecting with another human being. It's funny too, like I can see the difference in like when I'm a, a more assistant teacher and when I'm like a lead teacher, like when I'm a lead, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna listen like I just know but when I'm assistant I'm like yeah I can listen to myself a little more you know <laughs> like, like hold on you know like I just always listen like be present <laughs> well you're noticing a lot about what's going on up here that's it you just notice it you don't have to judge it or you don't even have to try to change it you just if you've already decided that you'd really like to get real good at listening you just will by noticing how you're listening. It's, it's kind of like when you're distracted, as soon as you notice you are, you aren't. 
That makes sense? It's that simple. See, all of the, aside from deep listening, all the rest of them are just being distracted. Sweet. You guys are champs. Who's next? It's also, it's also fair to tell you I had a terrible time. Hey, everybody. Uh, I did pretty good this week up to a certain point. I, you know, I felt like I was actually listening to the people I work with, you know, and, and not getting anxious about how many orders I had because of, um, I'm a cook and, you know, things went pretty smooth. And then uh, Friday night, I got to go out and listen to some live music and I really, really loved that. A friend of mine came up to town. Then on the way home, I had somebody turn right in front of me and I smashed up the front of their car and smashed up the front of my pickup. Whoa. And the, um, the preceding time I did everything wrong. I didn't get a license plate number. I didn't write down, you know, her license number. I took some phone numbers, which ended up being bogus. But then there was a, a guy who walked up and he goes, why don't you guys settle out of, out of pocket? And then I said, who are you? And I, and I felt really uncomfortable. And then he left and came back in a van with another guy and started badgering me and the girl was like the the woman i hit uh she's like this you know why don't you just leave and we'll take care of it in the morning so i i left this my you know in terms of listening i was i was like i gotta get out of here and uh so i left the scene and then ended up calling a friend and breaking down weeping as I realized all the things I did wrong and I didn't take any pictures and but one of the I guess in terms of listening especially to like an inner wisdom trying to figure out what to do I just knew I had to get out of there and then I found out that there's somebody I know that knows the guy who came up and that's a scam that they have where they have, you know, somebody in a stolen car, they, you hit them and then they try to get money out of you. And I fell prey to that, but I didn't fall completely prey to that. So I guess that was a good thing. I guess so. Yeah, but my, you know, my truck's sitting out front. It doesn't, you know, I had to get it towed a block away from my house because it died. And I'm hoping that the engine didn't seize up. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's been a challenging few days, uh, to say the least. But Are you, did you get hurt? No, nobody was hurt. I didn't, I mean... I drive a little Ford Ranger and it was like a, I don't even know this, the name, the type of car I hit, but it was, I crumpled the entire front end when I hit it. And um, yeah, it was one of those things where you're just driving and, uh, and it's, I mean, seriously, it's like, dry, there was no reaction time. It's just bam, I hit. And, uh, you know, trying to listen as after the fact that, you know, what do I do? You know, trying to, I got like a whole flock of chickens going off in my head, you know, and I'm trying to let them calm down and, you know, do the next step. And it's, 
<laughs> it's challenging. You um, know, it seems to me like the the one thing you did listen to was the most important thing you got out of there. Right. All the rest of it doesn't matter. So. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. In an in a ordinary accident, if there is such an ordinary, we're, it's not a scam. All the rest of it is stuff you do, but well, I, I, that wouldn't have worked here. Yeah, one of the things that has been super challenging as a result of this is not listening to the thoughts that I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I didn't do the right thing, I didn't get a call 911, I didn't get, you know, I call, I did a police report, but they said, well, if you don't have a license plate number, there's nothing we can do. But at least I reported it. And, you know, in the past, I think that I would have given more validity to those thoughts that I just mentioned. But because of where I am in my life and the things that I have accomplished, I, I'm able to release those and great. realize that, you know what, I'm still a great guy and it's, you know, um, I'm still, you know, trucking along just a little bit different day. Bravo. Let me tell you something I did once. Um, I opened the refrigerator and took out a dish of something or other, and it happened to be, I guess I was going to have guests or something, and it happened to be in a cut glass dish that my grandmother gave me. Mm. I dropped it and broke it. You know what I did? I hit myself in the face and I called myself stupid. Oh. Yeah. That wasn't nice. Right. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't believe it afterwards that I had treated myself that way. Wow. I didn't deserve that. None of us deserve to be talked to like that, even if it's us doing it. Right. So good job. Thank you. Thanks for the story. Can you guys, as I just pause a minute, can you guys see um, what I meant by the value of us getting together and helping and teaching each other this? Can you see how your stories are teaching? Can you see that? Every story you tell is helping to teach everybody else. There's nothing that teaches like parables, like stories. That's why I like to work this way, because that's I need all the help I can get. Who's next? Hi, Chair. Oh, did I interrupt? Right. Go ahead. I think what's um, been interesting for me is to see that because um, most of my work is done via Zoom and on calls and days have different kinds of level of flow and um, how much I can hold time on my mind. And it's a little bit like what Michael was saying, but it's been interesting this to just try and take it off my mind <laughs> to just see that even if I'm not rushing inside, I'm still sort of holding time 
And, uh, and so I've just been curious to let that do my best to just keep letting even that go and, and, and allow an even deeper, more present conversation yeah. and listening. That is an excellent plan. <laughs> I love that phrase, rushing inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sitting here being in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense at the time, Mavis, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, us human beings are hilarious. <laughs> Anybody else? Has everybody talked that wants to? So we're going to do another exercise. Say, yep, yay, we are. Okay. So um, this time, uh, same rules apply that you're, you're going to take turns talking and, and then listening. And the listener is not going to say anything. You're just going to notice how you're listening. And this time, um, I would like you to talk about someone in your life, whether now or a long time ago, that you think or thought was a great listener. And what it was like to talk with him. And if you can't remember anybody in your life that was as you saw it, a good listener, then talk about what that's like. Not to be able to any, remember anybody that ever listened to you. Okay? Azul is gonna magically send you into rooms. How long have we got? So like, how, just so we know, get a, we get a sense of time, not that we're gonna have it on our mind or anything, but like, how long have we got to, Three minutes each. Okay. Yeah. Three minutes each, and it's going. There is going to be a group of three. That group of three will have two minutes each. I will be sending uh, warnings. Okay. You can you can take time off your head because Azul is going to remind you. I I take the time in my head. Okay. <laughs> okay. See you later. Okay, so here's the question. Um, one or two word answers. What does it feel like to be really listened to? Connected. I'm writing them down, so go ahead. Loved. See. Unconditional love. Pardon? Unconditional love. Someone else said loved. Uh -huh. right. uh, unconditional love as well. Seen. Heard. I missed well, you you Heard. Heard. I said safe. Safe. Feels Sorry. like home. Oh. Yeah. Oh, validated. Yeah. What was that? Val one? Validated. Validated. Like you, you, you know, you feel like you. There's an authenticity, uh, and they validate the who you are, and you realize, yeah. you know, yeah. You're right. Yep. Accepted. Intimate. I'm going to say liberating. Mm. Great words. Healing. Healing. I didn't get that one. 
H E A L I N G, healing. Oh, yeah. Transformative. I think permission, like permissive to be yourself. Next question. How does it feel to not be listened to? We have to be appropriate. No, I'm just like, Go ahead. <laughs> like shit. Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aghast. Okay. Frustrating. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but I hear it all the time. Normal. Oh. Whoa. Isn't that sad? It is. Everything that's wrong with it, everything. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, sad. Sad. It's annoying. <laughs> Invisible. Less than. Yeah, I think they're good at this. Disposable. Whoa. You don't matter. Okay, I'm going to read these to you. This is how it feels to be listened to. Connected, loved, understood, seen, heard, safe, feels like home, validated, accepted, intimate, liberating, healing, transformative, and permission to be oneself. This feels to be not listened to, like shit, frustrating, normal, sad, annoying, invisible, less than, disposable, that you don't matter. So if you're working with someone or you're interacting with someone, how would you like to feel? And how would you like them to feel? That is the question. It's amazing the difference. It's amazing that we can accomplish for ourselves and for anyone we're in a relationship with, business or any other way. But we can accomplish simply by listening. That's it. That's it. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. This um, 
the purpose of this, of, of my purpose of wanting to do this with you guys uh, is because I, I'm 82 years old and I want as many people as possible before I go on to whatever's next. To, I want people to know who they are. I want people to know they matter and that they are everything they need to be already, that they are worthwhile, that if they are whole, they are not flawed, they are not diminished, they are not less than, they are not any of the things they may have believed they are, that those things are just thoughts are not true, they're not true. Truth does not hurt. Truth is liberating, it does set us free. And the truth of the matter is, we all matter. We all are absolutely who we're supposed to be. And being who we are feels right, it feels clear, it feels safe, and it feels like love of the deepest sort, not just, not just personal affection or preference. It feels like love. And when you listen to someone, you're introducing them to love. And it may have been scarce in their life, that feeling may have been really scarce in their life, may have been scarce in yours. But the beauty of it is that it can be your norm. All this other stuff is just a habit. It's just nothing, it's just habit. That living from who you are is love and it doesn't it isn't all peaches and cream and flowers and chocolate and roses and all that stuff love can be really really tough it can be really tough but not hard not malicious not damaging it had, I, I don't know, those of you that have worked with people, do you, have you noticed how when you're coming from love, you can get away with amazing things? You can tell people things, the absolute truth about themselves. But when it comes from love, it's a gift. But it's tough. Does that make sense? It's cool that it makes sense because that's what it is. It's common sense. And common sense is a sense of knowing that's common to everyone even if they don't think it is. Common sense is what you're made of. How are we doing? Are there any questions about where we're at, what we're doing? Yeah. Well, I think I wanted to say like it was it was really cool just to there was a moment where when we were listening, um, how listening felt. Um, and I just thought, wow, it's amazing to me. 
how something so simple and effort, like, I, I don't want to say effortless, I'll say simple, because at first it does require some some effort, I think. What requires effort is kind of all the, you know, the, the, the other stuff going on and to kind of hone in, but but just to see that really just being with someone and listening to someone could be all of those things, home, transformative, you know, validated, permission, etc. Like, I was like, wow, it's so simple, you know? And it's just always available to us. Who knew? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you're, you're right about, um, at first it's a little clumsy um, to kind of notice all the racket and let go of it. But it doesn't take long before it's not clumsy at all. It's just your norm. Because anything else doesn't feel right. I'm so glad you had that experience. You will never, ever not be able to have had that. <laughs> it's like an insight. You can't ha unhave an insight. The minute you've had it, it's too late not to have had it, which is wonderful. Insight Alliance, that sounds familiar. I have a question. Uh, we talk about how when we're listening, we give people love. Um, how, do we all, how do we always know when we're being listened to? I have someone in my life who I think really listens, but doesn't always do that thing that signals that he heard, like a nod, or a grunt or a, and what you know with that social contract that 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 sort of signals I heard you and so sometimes it feels like did you did did you hear that last thing and so I get stuck on that sometimes because I don't want my mind to think like that just go into the void and yeah. so what's your guess about it my guess about it is that my mind's probably just I, my guess my my guess about it well whenever my mind is anything but friendly my guess is that i just could be more friendly but my other guess is it feels to me like i mean i i just it like when in conversation i tend to nod or give a verbal cue or something so I don't know. I mean, I think everybody marches in through this life in a different way. So some people just don't give the verbal cues or other cues. Mm -hmm. Imagine I'm being heard, but I don't know. Well, most of the time I can feel it, but I can also feel when they're busy headed. And they're, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how I can feel it. I can just feel it. Yeah. Um, actually, because I'm listening. But it's like, you always know. You just know. You just, you can, because you can feel it. You, I'm not any different than you. You can feel it. And sometimes when they answer you, you can tell they didn't hear you. Or not answer. Sometimes it's not answer, and then it's like, "Oh, I heard you." It's like, well, "How would I know that?" <laughs> I have I have a, a person that a handyman guy who keeps my house from falling down around my ears, and he just fixes all kinds of stuff. And I, if there's ever a um, a contest for the world's worst listener, he'll win by a mile. Just absolute mile and if i'm in a bad mood it bothers me other than that i don't care he just he just likes to tell me stuff 
And if, if I say something, it interrupts his favorite thing, which is to tell me stuff. So I just, so, okay, that's the deal. I'm not, it's not my job to teach him how to listen. But he just, and I think the reason probably just likes to tell me stuff is that other people don't like to listen to him. And they get irritated quickly because he's such a terrible listener. But, but he's a good guy. And he fixes stuff, and I don't need him to listen to me. I don't, I don't need it. The people are just like everything else. Um, there's never been a time in my life or your life that you haven't been doing the best you knew to do, given what you saw was possible. And some of the best I knew to do is just got awful. But it's getting better and better. So it's like, that's all I'm asking for. I just want to, I just want to get better and better at just being myself. Because I, I really wouldn't rather be anybody else. I used to want to be pretty much anybody else. But no, I, I, I'm pretty, I want to be myself. Can you guys all see each other? Isn't everybody beautiful? What? Isn't that, isn't that sweet? Hmm. Any other comments or questions or whatever? Robin, thanks for asking that question. That was on my mind too. Um, and when you were going through the, the list of feelings when people listen and don't listen, um, you know, it always sucks to be ghosted. It really, really sucks to be ghosted right in real time in front of your face. And instinctually, we are made to know when that's happening to us. We are. And that's a hard thing to admit. Um, especially when the relationship is is um, at a different kind of level. So, could you say more about that? Well, my my feeling when Robin asked that question was this person that she's talking to. She has she deeply cares about this person. She what? Deeply cares about this person. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, there's there's. I get what you're saying, Robin, and I'll but my wife is notorious for ghosting me in real time, in real in real space, in my presence. So I got that feeling from you when you asked that question. So I, I feel like I could relate to where you were going with that. Um, and then Mavis, you talked about your handyman, you know, the the intimacy level between you and the person who takes care of your house is at a different level than Robin's <laughs> relationship with this person. So, yeah. and maybe you were able to say, you know, when you're in a bad mood, it bugs you. And when you're not, you just don't give a shit, whatever you're, you're <laughs> and, and that's cool. And I get that. I, I, I can wrap my head around the human condition and all of its, all of its moods and forms and bad moods and bad days and all of those things. Um, but when the relationship is in an elevated space um, and there's intimate and whatever that looks like for anybody, um, to be ghosted in front of you um, brings brings stuff. It brings mm -hmm. brings that special effects team, and then I think for me it brings self doubt. Mm -hmm. Well, am I being paranoid? Am I being too sensitive? Am I am I is it, am, I, am I making this conversation about me, or my gut instinct says I'm being ghosted by somebody I care about, and their mind is somewhere else and 
you know, I'm telling them about this, you know, crisis I had to survive today. And they're, you know, for all you know, whistling Dixie in their head and thinking about dinner. And, you know, where are you in that equation when you're supposed to be at this elevated relationship? So, mm -hmm. um, and that ties into what you said a little bit earlier is, you know, while we're all sitting here listening and talking and sharing is there's a, a intense, I think, adoration and love for everybody in this space, which means that when there's not that reciprocity and listening and, and that, it, that feeling is exactly opposite on the other side. You can immediately feel it. So it's either, I mean, it feels like the pendulum swings from being ghosted to being adored without any middle cushion. <laughs> you just go from <laughs> here to here, you know, without warning. Um, and that's, that's hard when you're in a certain type of relationship where um, there's a mutual or what you thought was a mutual respect and love and unconditional care. And, um, over the years and, and all the stuff, especially the last two years of my life, what I've learned with, with my family stuff is uh, love is the most important when it's the hardest to give. Um, and sometimes I have to love her even when I know I'm being ghosted in real time and space. So, but I've learned to say, hey, you're ghosting me. You're, you know, I'm, I'm not talking to you until next week, that kind of thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's plan B. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with when you feel a little less angry um, to have a conversation about listening because um, I didn't used to know I wasn't listening. I didn't know it. I, uh, sometimes I think it would be really nice to go back 40 years and get together everybody I didn't listen to very well and apologize and start over. But um, since that's not going to work out too well, I, I can just do what I do now. But I can. In my relationships in my family, there are some people that are pretty good listeners and some that not so much. And depending on how important it is to me, I will have a conversation about listening. But sometimes it just isn't important to me that somebody listens. And I have also had it happen with a couple of people in my family where I had given up on having them listen to me. I just say, okay, that's just not gonna happen. But what I did make a, in a couple of instances, I made a concerted, concerted effort to listen to them. And that turned things around a little bit. Not as completely as I would have preferred, but it, it did turn things around a little bit. I noticed they got a little better at it. So it's, it's why I say that when you listen to, when you're really listening to someone, you're teaching them how to listen. But it's also handy to not take it too personally if somebody doesn't, doesn't get it. Because it doesn't have anything to do with you. Nothing. That's, that's where we get in trouble when we think when we think when somebody's a bad listener that we don't matter or that we're not important enough or um, we're invisible. No, we're not. Just because somebody is up here chasing thoughts doesn't mean we're invisible. It just means they're not very good at seeing.
you know, little kids, we talked about that last week, little kids who are absolute detectives at noticing when somebody's listening or not. And, and they really want to be listened to because they want to be seen. And we can get so busy being parents that we don't see our kids. We, we see the chores we have to do and the things we have to do for them. So, but, but it never occurs to us to just sit down and listen. Just listen. There's a dog. Speaking of listening, dogs listen. Oh my goodness, I communicate better with this dog than most humans. <laughs> He's a good listener, huh? He's a really good listener. He's a good communicator too. Right. He's a good talker without using words. Time's a good. Share. Oh, sorry. Mark, go on. Mason. I, I, I sometimes a good ignorer as well, but you know they're listening at the same time. <laughs> I was going to speak to a little bit of what Robin, you know, and Michael and even Mavis, you guys were talking about. Um, and I think I'm one of the people you might have been talking about in that I sometimes won't offer the social cues that you guys are maybe asking for. Or, um, that's letting somebody know that they're listening. And, and I just want you to know, the two of you to know that I actually am listening. I'm trying to manage whatever is happening inside of me and not communicating something that that actually is going to go in the wrong direction right and i'm trying to really hold something within myself to not make it worse um and to me it's like you know what you were saying mavis if, if a person can just sit with trying to still be that listener you know you're really teaching love to the person who's just trying to figure out how to express whatever the hell is going on inside of them and they don't have the social cues because if they were to exercise the normal social cue they would be inauthentic in the moment like mm -hmm. i feel like i would be inauthentic to just give the you know the custodial nod or uh-huh or whatever i just don't feel like that's really where i'm at inside and so i'm balancing fighting the person that is really struggling with something with trying to not make the situation worse and I want to be kind to the person and also be kind to myself. So I think there's a whole bunch that goes on sometimes within a person or that's what I would like to believe. And I believe that if I believe that for other or myself, if I can believe that for others, I think that I can hold the space and allow the person to just come to the place they need to. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of just frame that a little bit in a way because, you know, people, I'm, I'm doing the best I know how to do sometimes, and it might not seem like this, some, that to somebody else, but there is, we are complex human beings, you know, all 16 of us tonight, and, um, you know, and, and we just don't know what is inside somebody else, so I just want to offer that. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. I know what... Um, before I started spending so much time on Zoom, there were um, quite a few clients that I would talk to on the phone, depending on where in the country they lived. And um, I, every once in a while, somebody would say, are you there? <laughs> and I, I would say, yeah, I'm here. And I realized I was just listening. And they, had, they would have no idea about that because they couldn't see me. You know, I wasn't saying anything. And, th and I realized they're not used to that. They're used to saying something and having a response, and saying something else and having a response. And I had to, I had to start warning people <laughs> that, that, um, if they didn't hear me say anything that I was, I was just listening, but it didn't always work. They'd still say, are you there? But 
my my goal here is to get deep listening to be really common so that people don't have to say, are you there? They might consider they're, they're being listened to. I wanna share something around this. Um, my my mother-in-law, she's quite special. She likes a lot like taking care of her plants and tools, like lots of tools, like any tool that you can think of, she, she likes to do that. And she's a very bad listener. Um, the first years of my marriage, I was kind of like angry at her, like, hey, hello, like somebody's here talking to you. But then, because I, I made it personally, like, why is she not, not listening to me? But Oh no, a couple of years ago, I realized that she just can do it. You know, it's not personal. And the funny thing is that even when she talks, when she shares a story with me, she's not sharing the story with me. She just talks in general. And she could finish and just go away to the garden, like with no response. <laughs> But then at some moment, like, it's funny because maybe in a conversation that says something like, oh, I would love to have my own basil, you know, like the plant to cook. And no reaction, no nothing, blah, blah, blah. And then two weeks after she's with the basil, she was listening in her way. And the other thing I noticed is that because she doesn't communicate really, I started to listen to her, right? not like the words, like what she does, the way she moves in the house, like the, the weather that she brings. I don't know how, how to explain this, but I'm seeing more and more that we can listen with our whole body, like just getting the feeling that the other person is bringing, even if they are not talking at all. And I don't know, for me, that's quite, interesting to not have the need of a response not taking it personally and also having the opportunity to i don't know be receptive in a more complete way feels better doesn't it yeah, yeah. Anybody else? So this, this, uh, these recordings of this, of this work that we've been doing here, um, they're meant to be yours to do with what you want. Um, if you want to use them to show your clients, if you want to use them to show your family, if you don't want to use them at all, they're still yours. And if you want to um, do these workshops yourself for somebody else, be my guest. This information, I don't, own this information. This is yours. Yes. But it, it is also true, again, that the better you get at listening, the more you value it, the more you respect it, and the more you listen to yourself the way you want to be listened to, the more you're teaching it, whether you ever do a classroom about it or not, you're teaching it. It's like the most, most wonderful pandemic. To just listen. 
I'm glad you brought that up, Mavis, because something I was thinking about was so often when we when we consider listening, it's attributed to listening to another. And <clears throat> I think listening to ourselves, listening to myself is is also so important, you know, and and how often do I do that? And and what is the quality of my listening to myself? And um yeah, it, it, uh, to me, it's an interesting inquiry. Like, what is my relationship to listening to myself? Yeah. 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 One of my favorite parts about, uh, at least I hope this is what's coming across on the, on, on the exercises that we do, is so many times over the years with people that I've been passing this on to, is in the exercise, it's the first time they noticed that they think now you would you wouldn't think that would take so long but um and if somebody said do you know you think people said well, of course i think everybody thinks but catching yourself in the act of it is is real different catching yourself um listening to how you're listening is that inborn ability to observe ourselves creating our own reality, creating our own experience. And that many, many times, it's the first time anybody ever realized that that's what they're doing and that there's something optional about the experience you're creating. There's something optional about it that you can you can go back and forth between listening to your own mental activity or you can let that go and listen deeply to someone else. And you're choosing all the time, even though you could have sworn you're never choosing how you think. But the jig is up now. Now you can see, oh my gosh, I'm worrying about what time it is. Oh my gosh, I'm listening to this person, but I wonder what I'm going to have for lunch. Oh my gosh. That person looks terrible. She looks like my great aunt Tilly and I can't stand my great aunt Tilly. It's like, you'll catch yourself making up stuff and seeing how funny that is. It's just funny. I think it's funny. And you won't take yourself so seriously and you'll be glad to catch yourself at something that you hadn't realized wasn't in service to you. You just hadn't realized it. But once you do, once you see it and it's out on the table, it's like, ah, too late now. It's going to be harder and harder to do that. This is good news to see how astonishingly well-made you are that you can watch yourself make up your own life. Aha. Ah, I've loved hanging out with you guys. If you, if you feel like it, if it occurs to you, I think somewhere along the line, there's, isn't there something with my, my email on it? We have something with, Anyway, somewhere along the line, I'd love to hear how you're doing. I don't usually get to find out. And so I've, I've started telling people, I'd really love to hear how you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mavis. You're welcome. Thank you so much, yeah. Take excellent yeah. care of yourself, okay? All right. Well, just yes. in case nobody else yes. does, you do it. <laughs> Take care of yourself too, Mavis. Yeah. I appreciate Thank you. you for us. I will. Thank, Thank you very much. You.